Yes, sir. Means every pregnancy, normal pregnancy is delivered in the ninth month. So this ninth month, your long-awaited desire shall be released. That which you've been stretching your hand to touch, that which you've been expecting, that which you've been longing after, this month, God will answer you with them. You will never see a better last month. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please, you may have come with your desires for the month of September. Do drop them on this anointed ground. The power of God will be emitting through that, even from the ground, and your testimony will be established. Has God been good to someone here? I don't know about you, but he has been good to me. I slept, I woke me up because the Lord sustained me, not because I'm powerful. The Lord sustained me. It is because of his mercies that we are not consumed. Did you hear the catalog of testimonies here this morning? Miracle children. One of them by our fruitful class here in November. Somebody, after 10 years, came back and want my wife to conceive. And God answered after several months. And today, they have their baby. Deliverance from fire accident. A girl that refused to come back from your service by prayer and the blood coming back. <laughs> God is faithful. Hallelujah. Why not lift your voice and lift your hand? Let's magnify the Lord. Let's show him how grateful we are. Let's glorify the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him adoration. Exalt the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you glory. Father, we exalt your name. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Father, do more than we can ask or think in this service. Let no oppressed return and shame. Give answers of peace to every attendee. In Jesus' excellent name. Please help me welcome your neighbor to the left, to the right. You are welcome to the presence of God. This is your service. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Congratulations. This is our covenant day of healing and deliverance is also a prophetic entrance service to the new month. The word of the Lord to all this month is Jesus Christ the healer is here. Say with me, Jesus Christ the healer is here. Now that he's here, your case will not be referred to another. In the name of Jesus. We started a serious teaching in the first service today. Is there no Bab in Gilead? This will run in all our Sunday services. But one B now. I encourage you to please get the teaching of the first service. We we'll lay the foundation. We're building on that. Please do everything within your power to get that first service teaching. We may not be able to go back to all we said. But God of heaven will reach out to you again in this service to give you your desired answers. Once again, I want to say that this is the clinic of the greatest, greatest physician. Jesus Christ is the wholesale healer and is consulting here today. And just like a case cannot be referred from a consultant physician to a dispenser in the chemist. <laughs> 
No one will refer your case today to another. Jesus is the final bus stop. If you can't do it, nobody can do it. And I want to let you know that he will do it today. In Jesus' glorious name. Is there no bomb in Gilead? That's the question. I will answer that here. Come with me to Luke chapter 5, verse 17, as I take my test. Luke 5, 17. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. I read. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem just like we've done today and the power of the law was present to heed them. What was present? And Jesus Christ the healer is here. The power of God is present with him now to heal you. The Bible said it came to pass on a certain day. I want to announce to someone, this is your certain day. Last Sunday may have been someone's own, but this Sunday is your own. <laughs> certain miracles happen on certain days. So special miracles will take place in your life today. And as he was teaching, the power of God was present to heal them. We're talking about the Jesus, the greatest healer. A man approves by God with miracles, signs, and wonders. And the Bible said in Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing them that were oppressed of the devil. Every sickness is an oppression of the devil. God cannot be healing you and be oppressing you. No. Don't take the lie of the devil that maybe God is trying you, is tempting you, is punishing you. No, you can never use mosquito to correct your children. God cannot be giving you sickness and be healing you. Every oppression of the devil, therefore, today will be terminated in the name of Jesus. Whenever a patient goes to the hospital and he sees his own family doctor and the drugs are available, he's excited, his hope comes alive. Because the chances of getting healed is there. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? So we need to know. What is the bomb in Gilead? A bomb is actually an ointment for curing sicknesses. Hear me. The word of God is one of the bombs in Gilead. There are many bombs, but the word of God is a central, foundational, vital bomb in Gilead. How do I know this? Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word. His word healed them and delivered them from all, not some, all their destructions. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8. So if he healed them and delivered them by his word yesterday, he can do the same today. Someone is getting healed right now. 
that pain, that movement in the body, that ulcer, that arthritis, that form of egg, stomach egg, headache, migraine, that followed you here, you will not return with it. Proverbs chapter 4, 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. When you attend to his word, you, are, you will tend to life. Attend to my words. Incline my, thy ears to my saying. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Let them not depart from your eyes. For they are life to them that find them. And hurt unto their flesh. I said in the first service. If you need hurt, you need words. If you need healing, you need word. So, the choice is yours. But hurt is stronger than healing. Hurt is absence of sickness. Healing is that you had hurt before, you are now rest, restored or you recover. Anytime the word of God comes to you on any situation, there is a springing force, especially of your head. Isaiah 58, verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as in the morning, and thy head shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. When the light of the world breaks forth, one's head recovers speedily. So I pray today that understanding, light, illumination from God's word will come our way and there shall be recovery. Your head shall spring forth speedily in Jesus' name. You agree with me that the dominion of light over darkness is unquestionable. Oh, oh. For somebody here today, the irrecoverable shall be recovered. Yeah. Whenever light comes, darkness will give way. This is why in Matthew 8, 8 to 13, remember, the Roman centurion answered Jesus in a way that Jesus had never been talked to before. He desired Jesus to come to his house to heal. And Jesus was ready to come. He was already on his way. He sent a message to him back. I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. I am a man under authority. I can say to one, go, they go. I say to another, come, they come. And I can see you are a man under authority. You don't need to come to my house. Speak your word. And my servant shall be healed. <laughs> Jesus said, look, I've not seen a great faith like this. Not in Israel. And Jesus spoke the word. And the same, same hour, the servant recovered. Now hear me. With all humility of heart, I want to announce to you that you are a man under authority too. And I am also a man under authority. Who can say to one, go, they go. Say to another, come, they come. And I stand here with that understanding, with that light. I command every sickness that is not planted by God. Because it's written in Matthew 15 verse 13 that every tree my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. Ask any lawyer. The word shall is a stronger word than will. Shall be rooted up. Uprooted. If God has not planted that migraine, that means it shall be rooted up now. If God has not planted the diabetes, it shall be rooted up. If God has not planted that menstrual pain, it shall be rooted up. If God has not planted that movement in the body, it shall be rooted up. I stand here as a man of the authority. Whatsoever my father has not planted in you, I command it to be rooted up now. Also, if any can be rooted up in the name of Jesus. Romantic pain, athletic pain of any guy be rooted up now. Diabetes of any guy, I command you to be rooted up now. Hypothesis ABC be rooted up in the name of Jesus. 
every form of yellow fever high fever every form of satanic siege of leukemia every false spirit of glaucoma every false spirit of partial deafness i command you to be rooted up in the name of jesus all you need is your faith to connect and you will collect <laughs> 1998, I was a very young pastor then. In Akure, a young man, a student of Federal University of Technology, Akure, he used to wear glasses, but he was not saying well, even with the glasses. And I preached one message, one midweek service. And this young man came to me, he said, I'm tired of using these glasses. I said, are you sure you want to drop the glasses? He said, yes. Let it be to you according to your faith. And <laughs> we prayed, and he dropped the glasses. I squeezed the glasses, dropped on me. The dust bin. Now, I'm not saying you should drop your glasses if you don't have the faith to be healed. Do you understand? Because some people do some things without it. So, immediately he dropped the glasses. We prayed. And this young man began to see well. He finished his school. He was still seeing well without using glasses. When I was to wear that 798, the father had that that pastor that prayed for my son. Do you understand? <laughs> and he got here. He sent me some things. He sent the boy to buy some gifts for me. The boy is a good boy. Get sense. He came to me. He said, this is what my father said. I should use to buy gifts for you. But I know you need the money. So take the money. And I really need that the money. <laughs> I really need that the money. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will answer you and give you an answer of peace. Anytime you receive a striking revelation in the word of God, mm, is it like this? Now I know. A mm, winners have a way of Expressing that I keyed into it, I jumped into it, I tapped it, I heard it, I embraced it, I packed it. <laughs> when that revelation comes, that striking revelation, darkness disappears. Mm, I can see by his stripes, I am healed. Mm, he took away my infirmity, which means what he has taken away, I cannot have it. When you understand this, honestly, you, you walk out on any sickness. If you are born again, child of God, I want you to understand something. The ransom has been found. The ransom has been what? Jesus became a ransom for you and I. So you can no longer be a testing ground for sicknesses. An experiment. Something happened in Matthew 27, 16 to 26. And that is illustrative of what price Jesus has paid for us. Remember, anytime Just like in our culture, maybe during independence or any special occasion, the governor, the president, has right to release any prisoner. True or false? Okay. Please come, sir. Now, something happened. Remember, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, each one had a significant role. And that's what happens when you go to do water baptism. If you are not done water baptism, you have not identified with the dead, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, when you want to be baptized, they will raise your hand like this first. They will spread your hand, which is the crucifixion. They will now lower you into the water, which is the burial. And they push you out with the freshness of the water, for the freshness of life, to live a new life. Some people don't understand what happens. Now, but... Before the crucifixion in that Matthew 27, something happened. 
Normally, during their feast, the king must release a prisoner. And there was a notorious criminal and a prisoner called Barabbas. He was head. Do you understand? He was head in captivity. But the people say, look, this Jesus has not committed any sin. You know, Jesus has not done anything. But the people say, look, we want him to be crucified. Give up Barabbas. Take Jesus and crucify him. They might say, if I kill him, I, my, my, I'll wash my hand of my blood. No, they, uh, they say, I better give up Jesus. Crucify him. He said, his blood will be upon your head. He said, upon our generation. No problem. Crucify Jesus. Give up Barabbas. And Barabbas was released. He's supposed to die. Are you getting me now? He's supposed to pay the price for what he has done, but he was released to go. And Jesus was taken in. That Barabbas was you and I. Are you following me now? Jesus became the ransom. Read Job 33, 21 to 25. He said, if there a ransom be found, then you will deliver him from going to the pit. Then his flesh will become fresher than that of a youth. Are you getting me now? Barabbas was released just like you and I so that Jesus can bear your sickness. Bear it on the cross. He nailed all the sicknesses in this world on the cross. 39 categories of sickness as identified by medical practice today. Jesus took one stripe for each. He took 40 minus 1, 39. 39. One stripe represented one category of sickness in the world today. And he took it. He nailed all the sicknesses. He was uncomely. He nailed, as a mother of father, he cried, Father, how why have you forsaken me? At that time, he has to forsake him because he's bearing the, your sickness, your sin, everything. He nailed them on the cross. That's what the Bible says. Every contrary thing, ordinance against us, was nailed on the cross with him. Now, you that is born again, that's been baptized, resurrected, pushed off from the water and the newness of life, you are no longer, you know, some people see, see the cross stage. You are no longer at the cross stage. You are no longer at the barrier stage. You are now like he is now. That's what the Bible says, as he is now, so are we in this world. As he is now. Where is he now? At the right hand of God. Glorified state. You are no longer at the cross stage. You are on the glorified stage. You are being released. You are free. You can't come and say, hey, I'm no more free. Come and take me back. Barabbas can't say, take me back. No, Jesus, come on. No, Jesus has been taken. He has been crucified. He has paid the price. So why are you still carrying what you have been loose from? Ask yourself, why? Clap for this young man. <laughs> now, you have been set with me, I have been set free. Are you Am I with people here? Yes, say, I have been set free. Yes, the ransom has been found. Yes, I cannot pay the ransom again. Yes, now, if you go and buy television set, brand new, 32 inches, colored, not black and white, and you are taking it to your house, and you have the evidence of purchase. Oh, you are taking me somewhere. Do you know the blood of Jesus is your evidence of purchase? The blood of Jesus is what? Ask Jeremiah. He understood what I'm, evidence of purchase. God told Jeremiah to go and measure the land and buy it and take the evidence of purchase and give it to Hananiah to keep. And when problem came, it was that evidence of purchase that delivered the land to them. Now, the blood of Jesus is your evidence of purchase. By his stripes you were healed, but by his blood he paid for your sin, which was the greatest thing the devil was using to hold you and I down. Now, when you are carrying that television and a policeman stops you, say, hey, what you carry? What will you do? You bring your receipt. If the man refuses to recognize the receipt and is uh, trying to say, where is the receipt of the receipts? Or where is your, why is your traffic not working? You should know that he's looking for another thing. If it's for this one, he can't hold you again because you have the evidence of purchase. 
That's how it is. By the blood of Jesus Christ, which is your evidence of purchase, the devil cannot come and harass you again. And say, take sickness, take this one, take that one. No, no, no. You have the evidence of purchase. Anytime he's disturbing you, show him the evidence of purchase. <laughs> say with me, I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyway, we have been looking in this service at... For today, we are going to see different aspects of this. We're going to be looking today, understand your right to total health. Understand what? Your right to total health. Now, if you're a born again child of God, you belong to God's family. You belong to who? God's family. And in this family, there is no sickness. Sickness is not a part of this family. Sickness is not part of the heritage of this family. That is why, if there be any hereditary disease, they've told you that it's running in your own biological family, that is no more your portion. What is written is stronger than what is happening. So overlook what is happening, focus on what is written. And what is written, it says you are a member of the family of God. And there's no sickness in this family. Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. If you are carrying sickness and disease, you are not suffering to save anybody. Jesus has suffered all the suffering and, and carried all the pains and all the griefs and nailed it on the cross. So, you are glorified with him. You are to be glorified with him. And as he is now, so are you in this world. Hebrews 2, 11. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. So you are Jesus' brethren. I want to ask you now. That sickness that they said that is in you. Can it be in Christ? If it cannot be in Christ, then it cannot be in you. You know what? Colossians 3.3 3 said, Your life is hidden in Christ and Christ in God. So anything that must tamper with you must first of all tamper with God and tamper with Jesus and get to you. <laughs> some of us, were, we, are, we have seen some fortified houses where you cross the first gate, the second gate, the third gate. Have you seen houses like that before? Glory to God. Now, anything that must tamper with you, the Bible says your life, Colossians 3 3, is hidden Christ. And Christ is hidden God. You must scratch God first, scratch Jesus before they can get you. So, whatever cannot stand Jesus, who is your brother, cannot stand you in the name of Jesus. You are from the same lineage. Ephesians 2 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Say with me, I'm a member of the household of God. Yes, and in this household, there is no sickness. Hear me. Anything you can picture in God, anything you can picture in Jesus, never think it will come to you or it will be in you. Somebody looked at something and told you you have arthritis, you have kidney failure, you have fibroid, you have hormonal imbalance, you have no sperm count, you have no sperm count, you have diabetes A, B, C, you have uh, this high blood sugar, you have low blood sugar, you have blindness, you have anything they are telling you, sir. Look at the word of God. The Bible said, by his stripes ye we are healed, which means you don't have it. Jesus took away your infirmity, you don't have it. So I stand here today and decree that whatever cannot be in Jesus that is in anyone's life today, that such be nullified in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus that is our evidence of purchase, 
I give quick notice to every sickness and disease in your body in the name of Jesus. Oh, hear me. Everything in this world hears. Everything in this world hears. Any kind of sickness by whatever name is called hears. They too know whatever. If they call it a name, the name of Jesus is higher than every name that is named. The name of Jesus. I've chopped testimony with us here before. Something that happened in 5th November 2007 at Kwale in Dokwa West, local government. And that has stayed here. Now, that lady collapsed at the office. And when she was brought, just in the name of Jesus, four cowries came out of her. Anointing her head with oil, three further cowries came, seven of them. The same person that was carried into the office walked out by herself, ended up singing for us in the choir. Now hear me and hear me well. The Bible said that the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee of everything in heaven, on the earth, under the earth, shall bow. I command every sickness by whatever name, rheumatism, high blood pressure, every form of hormonal imbalance, pelvic inflammatory disease, every form of satanic problem with the waist, with the spine, with the heart, with the kidneys, with the spleen, with the pancreas, every part of your body. I decree in the name of Jesus that such sicknesses bow. Such infirmities bow. Such diseases bow. For every sickness, there is a spirit behind it. The, bread, the woman was bound by the spirit of infirmity. So every spirit behind that sickness, behind that hereditary sickness, I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that this word you are hearing coming like fire and hammer, such sicknesses be crushed. Every spirit behind that sickness bringing molestation in the day, in the night, that satanic bedwetting, that satanic occultic manipulations in the night feeding you with rubbish and before you know it you can't understand your body every form of molestation of spiritual husband, spiritual wife that have not allowed you to be yourself I decree today that such force be terminated my God will give you a clean bill of health in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, my Bible told me in Isaiah 59 verse 19 that when the enemy shall come against you as a flaw, the Holy Ghost will raise a standard against him. And the Holy Spirit is behind the spoken word. The Holy Spirit is the author of scriptures. It's the one behind the word of God. Anytime the quickening word of God comes, the Holy Ghost raises a standard against every foul spirit. Therefore, I decree today by the power of the Holy Ghost that a standard be raised, a wall of defense, a page of fire be raised against every sickness and infirmity. Whatever God approves today will not return in the name of Jesus. <laughs> We are going to take instant testimonies in this service. The first service today will have seven instant testimonies, including infirmities of over two years given way. Someone is here today, you will not return without oppression. <laughs> Jesus, bless us name. Quickly, before we close, what is in the word of God that he is? What is in the word of God that he is? I said something in the first service. That anytime you see any drug in life, what makes that drug tick is the active ingredients. Find out from pharmacies. That's why when they look at the drug, they look at the composition. What are the things that make up the drug? What are the active ingredients? So there are certain active forces in the word of God that make that the world to heal. We've seen two in the first service. We saw that the word of God is medicinal. Anytime you eat the word of God, you are eating medicine. So what medicine can do, the word of God can do and do better. The difference between medicine and the word of God is that the word of God cannot expire. 
It has forever potency. Any medicine has a has expiry date. Is it okay? You cannot take overdose of any medicine. It has negative side effects. But you can take the overdose of the word of God and get better. Glory to God. <laughs> What again do we have as a difference between the word of God and medicine? There is no medicine that has both curative and preventive tendency. We have two kinds of medicine. We have curative drugs. Somebody is sick, you introduce curative drugs, the person can recover. Is it okay? Uh -huh. Like uh, coitem is a curative drug. But there's another kind of medicine, it's called preventive drugs. It's just to stop sickness from coming. We call them preventive drugs. And such drugs can be like vaccines that you take. Yellow fever vaccine to stop that. Is it okay? Now, there is no drug that can do the two at the same time. But the word of God can do the two. Why? The word of God is a two-edged sword. It can do the two. There's no drug that is as powerful as the word of God. It's quick and powerful. No drug can give you a quick result like the word of God. As a matter of fact, many medicine, when you take it, they will tell you after so so time, you start walking. But the word of God, you can enter now and start walking immediately. It's quick and powerful. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, read it. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. There is no surgical blade that is as sharp as the word of God. Where medicine cannot enter, the word of God can enter there. You know why? Everything in this world was made by it. There was nothing that was made that was not made by it. Glory to God. I hope somebody is getting me this morning. So, we saw in that the word of God as medicinal. We have seen also the word of God as creative. Let's look at some other aspect of the word of God or active ingredients in the word of God that makes for healing and wholeness. Number one we want to see in this service is that the word of God is surgical. The word of God is what? Surgical. Surgical. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. So if you want quick and powerful result, result to the world. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart of man. Look at this. In Genesis chapter 2, church 1 to 23, God discovered that everything he made, he made them in pairs, but Adam was left alone. And God wanted to create a woman. God didn't form another woman. God opened up Adam. And took up a rib from him. Say with me, surgical. <laughs> and created another woman, another person called a woman. And when Adam saw, Adam said, Yeah, this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. The word of God can pierce to the dividing asunder bones, marrows, joints. Oh, blessed be the day. I understood this scripture for the first time. God by revelation opened me to this scripture and I've seen all manner of miracles happen by this light. Because in the year 2000, I was serving in Durumi in Abuja then. And uh, a lady was having her sickle cell crisis because she was a sickle cell patient. What happened? The brother, she was, she couldn't sit down, crying, rolling on the ground. I was grieved with compassion. I don't know how to describe it. You no, know, there's some people are going through it as if you should carry it by yourself. Anyway, you want to, you want to exercise the power of God, be compassionate. If you are compassionate for the sick, God will empower you to heal the sick. If you are compassionate for those looking for the fruit of the womb, God will empower you to do so. If you are compassionate for the poor, God will empower you to do that. So, as I was dealing with compassion, 
God, how, what? Go quicken this scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. That the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edges sword. Yes, the divine that's on our bones, joints, marrows. The descent of the thoughts and intents of man's heart. And God opened my understanding that look, sickle cell anemia is a blood related disease. Blood is formed in the blood marrow. And the word of God can go to even the blood marrow. With that understanding, prayed. And she went back from SS to AA. That was the first time I would say such a miracle. Up to date, I've seen more than four of that happen. The one that, that by this light too, two young people wanted to marry in Kaduna. Two of them, AS, AS. <laughs> and the parents say, you will never marry. And they came with the medical report. I said, no, God can do something. One of you can change. We prayed, two of them changed. Two of them from AS to AA, AS to AA. They stayed one year to say, let's pray. When they now came back to church, because when you want to marry, we'll see, do the test. Glory to God. They married in the winners in Kaduna there. When they eventually came to church, we see, did our own test in our own way. Not you go and do, we we'll did it. But after that, they did their own. It was AA. They came to share the testimony. When they came back, after one year, we see, did it. It was AA, AA. Showing that the word of God is big and powerful. Now, I command someone's genotype here now to change to AA. Yeah. Whatever you want to be negative, I command it to become negative in the name of Jesus. Yeah. By this, I've seen HIV hit several times. Hit. One day we did a healing school and prayed and said, Go back and take and do the test. They will apologize to you. <laughs> Now, what they saw before, they didn't see it. And somebody went there to check HIV positive turned to negative. The word of God is quick and powerful. Surgical. 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 Anything you want to create, you can create by the word of God. Anything you want to part, remove, or operate. But should this thing be strange to us? It shouldn't be because even today, medical science has discovered what we call laser surgery. Doctor, is it true? My doctor, my consultant, come now, let's preach again. Let me ask whenever you hearing what Pastor is saying. So is there anything like laser surgery? Okay. Now explain to them what laser surgery is all about. Because today, without touching you, by concentration of light, and the word of God is light, by concentration of light, they can remove disease from your body. Now, is it true, sir? Please explain what laser surgery is all about. It is true. There is laser surgery. For example, when people have sickness and disease in Tumor. the retina, mm. which is where the light falls on, and there is bleeding there, they can use laser surgery to do it. And then people have uh, stones, you know, kidney stones. They can also use laser surgery. It will break down the stones and they don't need to cut you up. Thank you. Did you get that? Because if I'm talking now, you say, Pastor, what is your background? <laughs> this is from a consultant. By concentration of light, they can remove sicknesses from your body without cutting you physically. So, if we are talking about the word of God being surgical, it shouldn't be a strange thing to us. Are you getting what I'm talking about? What? The entrance of the word of God brings light. The word of God is light. So, when you focus the light, when you concentrate the light in your body, it can disappear. It can make any sickness to disappear. I think they copy that, thing, that idea from the Bible. Do you understand? Because you can use the, the known to lend the unknown. Glory to God. Number two, 
The word of God is prophetic. The word of God is what? The word of God is prophetic. Prophetic. Anything the word of God says it will do, it can do it. That's why we call it the sure word of prophecy. The sure word of what? Prophecy. The word of God is prophetic. It's a sure word of prophecy. One day, a young boy had the stomach twisted, I think because of typhoid or something like that. And the doctor said, look, this young boy must go through surgery. A consultant doctor had booked them already. And the mother ran to me. Pastor, this surgery is to take 450,000, we have 25,000. In other words, where is the balance? I called our doctors in the house and I said, look at the case. <laughs> and they concluded by telling me, Daddy, this boy must go through surgery or we lose him. And I told the woman, let us pray. Your son may not even need this surgery. And as we are praying, God said, take the mantle in your breast pocket, give to her, let her go and rub the belly of the son. And she reluctantly took it because that's not what she wanted. She wanted the money. And she went back there, rubbed this belly. And the first, for the first time in days, the young boy felt like easing himself and he went to the convenience Ah, doctor say if he can do this, let's observe him. Let's wait. Let's observe him. Day one, day two, day three. Before you know it, he was in church. It just wanted to happen on Wednesday. On Sunday, he was ministering in the church. He ministered out of two, three services. He ministered in the two services, song ministration. And he's still heady today. Anytime you hear the word of God, it comes. Do what he says it will do. So if he said you are hid by the wall, he's taken away your infirmities. By his strength you are healed. Let not the, the inhabitants of the land say I am sick. Let the weak say I am strong. Anything the word of God says, it can deliver it. Somebody said I don't understand. In Ezekiel, The book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel pastor the worst church, Ezekiel 37. He pastor the worst church anybody can ever pastor. And Ezekiel came out and began to prophesy as commanded by God. This is not just the name of his church was Dry Bones International Assembly. Because all the members were dry bones. God asked, will these bones live? Ezekiel said, there are no words. God now said, prophesy. And he prophesied as commanded. And all the bones gave themselves bone race. Joined together, it became a skeleton. And God said, prophesy to the wind. And he prophesied again. And from everywhere, life came. And it became great army international assembly. By prophetic words. Hear me. When we say to you prosper, do you prosper? Yes, when we say advance, do you advance? Yes, when we say he too, you should be he. Yes, do you understand? Because the word of God is prophetic. The word of God is prophetic. Prophetic. When you are going for interview here, like did you hear one now? Somebody was going for interview. I said if there is anyone that will get the job, you will be the one. Did you see her today? Share her testimony. If you go there, it's going to be a gist. They will ask you, do you eat into me? Say yes, you get job. The word of God is prophetic. 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 
So anytime you hear the word of God, appropriate it as he as he said, and then you will see the results. You will see the results. Have you not seen people here? They've gone to many of you have shared some testimony. They've gone to a hospital. They give them a test. He say, he say, this cannot be my result. This cannot be my own. The best gynecologist in Lagos then, in a Lagos church, gave a baby to a woman and told her, look, you cannot mother a child. The lady went back and said, no, this is not my, this is not my portion. It's not my portion. She started anointing the, her nerve with oil and then conceived and gave birth. It was published in the Winners World that time. You know how she said, "My baby, I see you." My baby, I see you. That's the title of the Winners World that time. <laughs> My baby, I see you. They delivered. Even when the best gynecologist said it's not possible. Now hear me. With man, it may be impossible, but not with God. For with God, how many things? All things are possible. So what do you need? Anytime the prophetic word of healing comes to you, appropriate it. Luke 145. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things spoken to her from the Lord. If there's any word you have received here today, there shall be a performance if you believe. There shall be a performance. Should be a performance. Should be a performance. Therefore, I stand here today and I declare you healed. I declare you delivered. I declare you free from every oppression. The Jesus you see today, you shall see the number forever. Receive the healing power of God. Receive the healing by the name of Jesus. That woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment and was healed instanta. By the power of God, I command your healing right now. Bye bye to sickness. Bye bye to jati jati. Bye bye to every form of oppression. From now, you will not see that sickness again. Rise on your feet. We are going to pray. But before we pray, I want everyone here to stand right with God and be a member of the household of God. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and they're saved. You cannot get an inheritance in a family where you are not a bona fide member of that family. No matter how close you are with them, when they're sharing their family inheritance, they will tell you, bro, we'll have family meeting. Wait, when we finish, we'll talk. Healing and health is for the children in the house. Somebody is here, you want to say, I'm tired. I can't keep going the way I'm going. Jesus, I need you in my life. I need to be born again. I need to be a member of the household of God. I'm running to you today so that I can be saved. You want to be saved? Put your hand on your chest right now. Because until you are saved, you are not safe. Somebody is here also. You gave your life to Jesus Sunday, but you are no more there. Why not turn to Jesus? Return to him, he will return to you. What you do with him determines what he does with you. Your proximity to God is not determined by God. It's determined by you. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. So it's not God that will shift first. You are the one to shift. And somebody is saying, I'm tired of doing it my own way. I'm tired of moving around the circle. No peace, no joy. Jesus, I'm returning back to you. you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Put your hand on your chest. Also pray this prayer of salvation. Somebody is here, maybe?
suffering from certain evil habits pressures of life pressures of friend have made you to be indulging in that evil habit depression and all that and push you to do it and you know that you are not right with God you want to be set free you want to be delivered you want to come back to Jesus you want to run to him because your resolution didn't help you why not be sincere I know you are a sincere person you know yourself you can't hide yourself from God you're a good person but that evil habit has let you down bringing calamities bringing misfortunes why not open up to Jesus that hidden area and let him deliver you you're among the category of people I mentioned put your hand on your chest right now pray this prayer of salvation with me say Lord Jesus come into my heart be my Lord be my Savior I believe in my heart that you are the only son of God you died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Give me a new beginning. Thank you for setting me free. I am born again. I'm a child of God. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Sincerely wave your hand to Jesus, wherever you are. Please wave your hand to Jesus. Oh, there are sincere people here. God bless you. God bless you. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with. Walk to the front of the altar now. Please come to the front of the altar. Your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with. Don't leave anything behind. Come, come the way you are. Jesus loves you the way you are. Come to him the way you are. You are good for him the way you are. Hallelujah. Maybe you come with some prayer request in your more invitation card that was given to you by one of us. Please give it to ushers. They're going to bring that. Pick also your prayer desires for the month of September. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you. Jesus, 
I have come to you today with my desires for the month of September. Every normal pregnancy is delivered in the ninth month. Father, let there be delivery of all my heart desires. Lift me, remember me, favor me. Hear me and I shall be healed. Open doors for me like I cannot be shut. Connect me with those that matter in my matter. Let my case draw your sympathy today. Father, stretch forth your hand in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus, to heal me today. Heal me of every curable or incurable disease. Heal me of every form of pain. Jesus gave me instant healing testimony. Now please, my touch your go towards my right. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. Please go towards my right. God bless. Jesus set me free Deliver me from every high evil habit Let me switch on seas in my life Let operations in the day the night cease Let me scatter the seas Let the portrait of destiny cease Jesus help me Help me Help me. Help me. Open doors for me that cannot be shut. Let the year end well for me. Set to my children. Set to me, Lord. Set to my destiny. Set to my ministry. Give me soundness of heart to enjoy your blessing. Give me, oh Lord, a perfect heart. Let diabetes go. Let ulcer go. Let my strength be renewed. Give me by the quickening of your by the fire of the Holy Ghost, burn every chaff of sickness. Make things to go well for me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' excellent name. As we have said to his ears today, he will do to you. Oh, I see everything you have written down today being. Declared done. Yeah. Beyond what you have written here, God will surprise you. Yeah. This month will be a month of good news for you. Yeah. A month of mega alerts, yeah. mega favors, yeah. mega breakthroughs, yeah. a month of international connections. Yeah. God of heaven will wipe away your tears. Yeah. You will not enter into error. You will not see accident. My God will keep you. Keep your family. Your children will bring you joy. Now every request that been dropped here become testimonies. Father, in the name of Jesus, see to it that every request that been dropped here today turn to testimony. It shall turn to you for a testimony. It shall turn to you for a testimony. It shall turn to you for a testimony. Father, by your good hand, bring to pass every desire of your people in Jesus' mighty name. And we hear your testimony on this altar.